Hi everyone, welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching. Thank you so much for joining me and welcome back to my room here in Sydney, Australia. This might be deja vu for some of the long-term viewers. If you've been watching across 2020 to the start of 2023, you'll remember this was the room where I did a lot of different videos, monthly reports, master's episodes, all kinds of things happened here. So welcome back. For those of you who know this room, if you're new to my channel, then this is the room where I have been doing some work. I haven't been working so hard over the last few weeks because I have been recovering from a cold and I will be heading back to England very soon. And those of you who are booking spots for April, I will be back in England and of course offering live Zoom sessions. If you want to get a pre-recorded reading, you can get one of those. I will be doing live interviews. I'll be back doing all the full range of everything that I do. So yeah, that is coming up and I will be back there well rested because when I look back over my time, my little Sydney stint that I've done here, so since around December, I have achieved some of the things I set out to do, but not everything. And I certainly didn't plan the sickness, that was unplanned. And then today I had planned to do this video outside in the garden. I was really looking forward to making the most of those uh, purple flowered, blooms I wanted to do the, this session there but and today they were predicting beautiful sunny weather so I'm recording this on the 14th of March I'm recording this very early this time because towards the end of the month I will be flying back to England so I wanted to make sure this report is early for you guys because last time it was very late because I was so sick and I was looking at the weather report I thought I'll film outside in the garden it was supposed to be sunny all day today, but just in the last few moments, like the, the weather turned and I was like, oh no. And I set up the camera. I thought, nope, we're going to do it. We're doing it outside. I'm determined. I put the camera gear and I got everything set up and then it started to rain and I'm like, this stormy weather came all of a sudden. And do you know what? I do think that could be a bit of an omen for the month of April. Those of us who like to, you know, study Jyotish, we know that a Jyotish person has to take into account the omens uh, on the way to a reading or at the reading. You have to take into account all the different omens that come up. And yeah, this stormy weather came up and it makes perfect sense because the big news this month is that we've got Mars and Saturn conjunct in the sky you know we've had tension building up to this point across uh, certainly across March we'll see that continue to ramp up and we're going to really feel it 10th April or thereabouts we also have an eclipse very nearby which is 8th of April so that part of April could be intense for a lot of people so take care wherever you are I will cover that for all the mini reports. So for every mini report, we'll have a look at Mars Saturn conjunction. We'll also have a look at the eclipse and the full moon as well. And before we get into the mini reports, we'll have a look at the latest poll. We'll also have a look at energy in brief for April. Uh, and then I've got a little bit of news match up this time, not too much. Uh, and then we'll get straight into the mini reports. So let's take a look at the poll that I did and I'm going to try and do a poll each month. I think these are so much fun. Uh, yeah, last time we had a really good response. This time, let's see, I've got the screenshot here. It says 103 votes. There will, there might be more, but I'm just capturing it now so that you can see what it is because I'm recording this report today. And the question is, how do you experience the movement of the stars? And I wanted to look at this 
because one of my clients, hello to my client who wrote a beautiful email. He mentioned that he was doing, I think it was a profound meditation if I remember correctly, and he could really feel the movement of the stars. And this is in Northern Europe. He could really feel the movement. And that was an incredible uh, email. And we will explore that in a video. I think when I get back to England, I might do a video just on that topic because it's really, really interesting. But I wanted to ask all of you, do you, do you feel the movement of the stars? How do you feel the movement of the stars? And it's very interesting that the majority of people found number one to be uh, yeah, the, the most impactful here. So I find it hard to sleep on full moon nights. That's very typical. Um, and some of you also put that you've had big things happen on eclipses. And as well, some of you said, I don't feel the stars, but I study them as they connect me with nature. And when I was putting together these options, I thought about what would I choose and definitely um, the first one I would choose for sure and for me the second one I feel certain signs or nakshatras when observing people I really do and this happens to me a lot where I might be watching someone on TV or um, you know in a film or something like that and I'll just get an idea and I'll think that, that person's got significant Pisces I can just feel it and then when I look up the chart I'm always amazed. I'm always surprised. I'm like, oh my God, they've got this Sun and Mercury and Pisces. This happened just the other day. I was watching someone on the news and I was like, I know they've got a lot of Pisces. Uh, so yeah, sometimes I can see, like I can feel the starlight energy when I connect with a person. Sometimes, not always. Um, but definitely when I have my chart system up and when I'm definitely when I'm doing a reading for one of you um, and when I'm kind of, it's sort of like, when I'm appointed by you. So when you book me for a reading and um, you know, then I start the research process and I start looking into things and maybe sometimes I'm looking up textbooks or I'm just sitting with your chart directly or whatever it is that I'm doing, it, it's in that process that the stars come alive for me and start to talk to me and I can just, I don't know, I just feel things and start to see things. So reading charts is another way. I was gonna put that as an option, but um, I couldn't quite put that in there. But if you missed the poll but would like to let us all know in the comments how you feel the stars, I would love to hear from you because it's important to, uh, you know, see like, and I suppose you could match it up with your life. So when you watch one of these reports, you know, a lot of you are doing this, you're actively matching it up. And some of you will watch these at the beginning of the month and at the end of the month just to see, all right, what really happened? You know, what what here in this report really happened for me? That's always a good thing to do as well. And you can always let us know. So um, you can let me know below. And for some of you, you'll watch these reports and be like, well, none of this applies. But it doesn't matter. It doesn't mean that um, you're not connected in with the stars. Maybe if you were to watch a Western astrology report, you'll be more connected in with that. So, you know, there are lots of different ways of dividing up the sky. Maybe you just need to find the system that's right for you. Anyway, let's take a look at the energy for April in brief. What do we have going on? So as I mentioned earlier, we've got Mars moving closer to Saturn across this month. And as Mars does this, you know, there's, there's going to be this building up of tension. Okay, uh, and some of you might really be able to feel that right now. You can just feel that, yeah, there's something, something's about to happen or something's not um, quite right. Sometimes that's our own anxiety. Sometimes that genuinely is something collective. But I've been speaking to a lot of people, hearing from clients, hearing from different people that, yeah, there, there, there is this tension or this pressure that's coming up at this time. Now Mars and Saturn are exactly conjunct 10th and 11th April. This is happening really close to the total solar eclipse. Now this total solar eclipse is going to be across the United States of America. So this is definitely going to impact uh, America and that's on the 8th of April. So really 8th, 9th, 10th, 11th, these are important dates just to be mindful of this month. 
We do have some nice things happening in the sky. We've got Venus exalted for almost the whole month. So that's really lovely. Okay, we've got Venus that bright beautiful star that you know wherever she goes she gives great things uh to to all of us so so that's some good news in the sky there we do have mercury retrograding from aries back into pisces and that's from 3rd april to the 24th of april and this is important because communication could be you know things could go astray things could be communicated incorrectly uh, there could be some problems when it comes to communication that is possible here 3 april to 24th april mercury is not only retrograde but debilitated okay and that's from 9th april to 10th may so again when mercury is debilitated uh, sometimes that can be really a good thing for artists you know that's not such a bad thing uh, mercury being debilitated it's not a bad thing at all in a birth chart it can be a wonderful thing you know einstein i'm pretty sure he had his mercury debilitated so one must never feel bad about a debilitated planet but um, the fact is mercury will be debilitated from 9th april to 10th may and you know again when it comes to our logic function or communication uh, concentration even some of that could be a bit interrupted across that time we've got Sun exalted in Aries from 13th April onwards that's beautiful energy okay and some of you are you know consciously this year starting your year a bit later you're starting it you know in April you've given yourself some time to adjust and you're really going to charge ahead you know mid April onwards and that uh, works beautifully here when we look at the sidereal Vedic system it makes perfect sense because in the last poll that we did a lot of you said that you know you're going to start your year later makes perfect sense now we've also got Akshaya Tritya dates I want to give this out now so that you can plan ahead what is Akshaya Tritya? Akshaya Tritya is when the sun and moon are exalted in the sky okay so the king and the queen are in their best royal regal energies it's it's beautiful this this time and this is a time akshaya trithya where they say you can launch a new project you can start a business you can get married anything significant that you want to do on a particular date this is really the date to do it so i've got here you can launch new things on 9th may okay and that is a thursday that's good to know it's a thursday jupiter right thursday is jupiter day so that's a terrific date to launch something new maybe you want to start a social media platform maybe you want to launch a website well if you want you can do it on the 9th of may now end of 8th of may is possible as well and some of the 10th of may too but to be sure just do it on the 9th anywhere in the world you'll be fine okay i had a look at the date and time and everything from the perspective of london uk time uh, and i can definitely see that 9th may should be pretty sound for every part of the world all right so let's take a look at the news in brief what do i want to match up or talk about this time well i'll just touch on this one really briefly i didn't know i was going to talk about uh, the situation that's happening over there in Israel and Palestine because I thought I've covered that enough on this channel I don't particularly want to you know uh, ha have a look at that again but I am being drawn to this again because a friend of mine she is um, she, she too is a great occult student she's a bit of an astrologer herself she's very much a healer and she texted me now because she is French you know she speaks French and watches the French journalists and she sent me a message and I'm going to bring up the message just on my phone I won't bring it up on the screen but um, she mentioned to me that so this is the information that I believe she had she mentioned to me something about that elite people are maneuvering and they believe that there's some something big is going to happen across 
April potentially and she mentions the Jupiter Uranus conjunction 21 April and then I think it I think this should say Mars in Aries 1st of May so these are a couple of dates that she's mentioned and this is according to Western astrology but she texted me this information and she asked me she said what do you see in the Vedic system so <clears throat> I thought I'd just take a look and see all right I'll have a look at what's going on um, in both the charts of Israel and Palestine because recently I've put both of those charts in my system and I've been taking a look and it could be that things aren't um, great across this region we know that they're not great now uh, we know that but I'll just tell you what I see from an astrological sidereal Vedic astrological point of view um, and my friend said that she would have given me the French journalist who who said all of this and because it's all in French I wouldn't understand it so I don't know what the source is but my friend always reads the best stuff I trust her judgment always um, and she sends me very interesting things okay so what's happening from a sidereal Vedic point of view well I've got here from for Israel so what how what I looked at and what I saw was the um, Saturn Mars conjunction as being the most significant and serious thing for both countries and it's pretty interesting in Israel's chart um, and I'll just have a look at that here myself we've got this conjunction happening eighth from Israel's moon and I believe that looks to me to be sixth uh, from the ascendant one two three four five six yeah I think it is six do you know what because I've got my Mac here I don't have to do this from a screenshot which is quite good if I was out in the garden I'd be doing it from a screenshot yeah okay so um so that's correct it's sixth from and because it's six from the ascendant we can read that as a platform building time we can read that as a battle Okay, because um, Virgo, Virgo strategy war, because Virgo with the sixth house in a in, when I'm looking at a person's chart, you know when I look at the sixth house, I'm looking at arguments or court cases, but when we look at a country, we can look at that sixth house. What's an extreme argument? It's a war, so we do have this warring energy going on here from the side of Israel's chart, from the moon. We have this tight conjunction which could be difficult um, we have this tight conjunction happening eighth from the moon which is trauma it's also hidden things and it's also because we've got Mars involved here it's like maybe there's a sense of um, doing activities but the the country the chart that's doing the activity thinks that it's hidden that no one else sees okay so that was one of the interpretations that I had there uh, if we take a look at and I'm not passing any judgment on what I think here I'm just telling you the astrology and what I see here if we have a look at Palestine where is this um, intense conjunction going to happen on the 8th of April well now that is is pretty extraordinary because we've got that happening um, Palestine is in Saudi Sati deep Saudi Sati here we've got this tight conjunction happening just above natal Saturn and the moon okay and this you know Saturn passes over a natal planet once every 30 years and for Palestine it's um, incredibly difficult because not only is Saturn passing over Saturn and the moon okay that I mean that's that's you know that's your Saturn return and your Saudi Sati at the same time so not only do we have that going on for Palestine but if you have a look at the Vim Shotri Dasha you'll see that uh, Palestine has just begun Saturn Mahadasha uh, that's extremely tough so that's sort of three major Saturnian things all happening at the same time and I remember when I began my Saturn Mahadasha it wiped me out that was 2020 that's when I came back to this room gosh isn't that crazy yeah and I, I was really sick I was the sickest I've ever been 2020 and I came back here and for a good six months I I don't think I did hardly any work I did a bit I did what I could do you know 
but it wasn't much and yeah that 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 was tough and what i remember was that that saturn mahadasha the beginning of it kind of wiped me out um so you know we can read this for a person but when we're reading this for a country you know we can definitely see astrologically that uh, Palestine is going through just trauma after trauma after trauma. I mean, it's so intense. I don't even know how to. I don't even know how to talk about it. It's that's full on. So yeah, I think when my friend says that you know she's got these dates here of taking care or, or words to that effect, twenty first April could well be, but definitely from the Vedic point of view I'm seeing sort of the early part of April as being the most intense she also mentions the first of May I'll have a look at May when we get to May I haven't looked at May but um, yeah I just want to say that you know for anybody in that uh, part of the world sending just healing energy thoughts prayers everything um, and may it stop immediately I mean my wish is you know we don't have to wait for a conjunction you know we, we can pray for miracles and, and have those miracles happen now um, and there's a little bit more news that I also thought I would cover I'll just have a look at the time well 21 minutes okay well it's quite um, late into the piece well for those of you who have stayed this far into the video I can't imagine there are too many of you but if you have stayed this far um, we'll have a little look at another news item which I won't put on the description or on the chapter list I'm not gonna put this anywhere so those of you who've stayed this far I, I will talk about this as a little hidden uh, piece of news I wanted to have a brief look at the royal family and just to see okay what is going on because they are in the news a lot at the moment it keeps coming up on my dashboard and I haven't clicked on anyone else's um, prediction videos or any of that. I, I just want to tackle this one and, and tell you guys what I see because when I had a look at the chart of, say, for example, Catherine, the Princess of Wales, I, I did have a look um, and I just thought it's worth talking about because if we do have some astrology students here, this is really quite an incredible case study for a Dasha Sandhi period. Okay, so that's the only reason I want to talk about this. And we won't go into like anything gossipy or any of that. I don't want to do that. I, I'll just talk about the astrology here. But um, it, it is such a, a, a prominent Dasha Sandhi case study that I was like, well, let's, let's chat about it. Um, but in brief, why, why is the royal family, for example, going through such a tough time? Well, that I would say is due to Saturn passing through Aquarius. Saturn is passing through Aquarius, which is opposite Leo. Leo is the kingdom. And royal families around the world would all be being tested at this time. And that is just a fact because Saturn is in Aquarius. Wherever Saturn goes, you read the whole line. Okay, so when Saturn was in Capricorn, I was reading things like, you know, top leaders and leadership and corporations they're all being tested but it's it's driven us all where home everybody worked from home you know 2020 to 2023 a lot of people did okay so you you know I was reading that whole line uh, for Saturn and here we can read this whole line as well and where does the line go from Aquarius it goes into Leo the kingdom so Royal families are being reformed at this time. And I've got the note here that if you are not an extravagant royal family, Saturn tends to go a bit easier on you. And I think we can see that. We've seen with uh, the Danish royal family that they are not extravagant, uh, really. They're, they're very simple and elegant. And they had a coronation recently. And it was just so simple and elegant and beautiful. I really liked it. I thought they did a great job, you know, um, they just signed a couple of papers and he went out on the balcony and that was that, you know, whereas I think the British royal family, by contrast, by contrast, the British royal family, I think they have been extravagant or they are a bit extravagant and it feels like Saturn is 
testing uh, them quite a lot. So that is kind of interesting because this is a bit of a Saturnian thing. Um, I'm trying to remember what the story is, but there's like a mythological story with Saturn. I think it's, oh, I don't know if I've got this right, but I'll just have a go. And if I'm wrong, I'll put some notes on the screen by my side. I'm not brilliant at the myths, but um, I'm pretty sure it's Ravana, who's like the bad guy. And he um, had Sadisathi coming and he was worried about it. And so he turned himself into a dung beetle. And then for seven years, because he thought, oh, brilliant, that's my way of escaping um, the wrath of Sadisathi. And then after the seven and a half years or whatever, he comes out and Saturn's kind of laughing at him, saying, like, you know, Ravana's laughing himself, sort of saying, ah, ha, ha, I escaped your wrath. But Saturn's laughing at him going, yeah, but you lived in, you know, a not, not very nice place for seven years. So, so anyway, I mean, look, the thing about Saturn is that if you're very conservative, and live very simply and are very humble, you tend not to experience Saturn's wrath, right? That's, that's very much one way of, um, of avoiding that. But anyway, so that I just wanted to touch on that point about Saturn is an Aquarius. It is giving royal families all around the world a bit of a tough time. If we take a look uh, at what's happening with Catherine, Princess of Wales. So she is currently in Dasha Sandhi period. So what is that? So when your Mahadasha finishes, okay, and she's finishing a big long Mercury Mahadasha, 17 years, that's a 17 year chapter of her life. When you finish that period of time, the next Mahadasha, you will start to feel it. Say for example, now if it's a short Mahadasha, you'll feel it about a year before it's due to start. And she is transitioning into Ketu Mahadasha. What's really interesting here, so now I didn't realize it was so soon. I knew it was coming up, but when I looked yesterday, I was shocked. It's like, oh, it's starting in July, 2024. And I was like, oh my goodness, no wonder. No wonder we've got all the things that are happening right now that are happening. Uh, so what, what is Ketu Mahadasha? Okay, so well, so, okay, so she's finishing the Mercury Mahadasha. And we know the rule that the year before the new Mahadasha is to begin, you're going to feel the energy of that new Mahadasha. You're going to get a taste of the next chapter in the year before. So that her next chapter is Ketu. Now, what is Ketu? Now, Ketu is... Oh, it's hard to put words to what is Ketu because Ketu, we can't grasp it. It's not a physical planet. It's a mathematical point in the sky. It's the south node. It's past, past lives. It is, it's something we can't grasp. It can make you invisible. Okay, it can give health challenges and I can put my hand up and say, yep, I know that because I've got Ketu in my first house. So if anyone knows Ketu, I know it, but I don't know how to put it into words. But I live it. I know it. And it's funny because I have often felt like my whole life I felt invisible um, and I kind of am a bit invisible, but then I will be invisible to most people, but then the, the people that I'm meant to see and know and Oh, I'm very visible. So it's so obvious, but it's like there's an invisibility about Ketu. And it's really interesting that we're not seeing Kate. Okay, so, um, so that is a factor with Ketu. Ketu can be invisible. Another thing about Ketu, like I've got Ketu in my first house, so I really feel the effects of it physically. And it does have an impact on your physical body. It can be that your physical health is not so robust. And it's really interesting, she is experiencing health challenges. Okay, so her physical health is not robust. Um, the other thing I know about is, well, Ketu Mahadasha, I've, so many of my clients <coughs> have come for a consultation because they're in their Ketu Mahadasha. 
And a lot of times when people come to me, they're in the Keta Mahadasha. They are confused. They are thinking, what the heck is going on with my life? They, they, they have this feeling that I don't have a grip on life. I don't have a grip on life. It's like, you know, time slipping through my fingers. Or the other thing is, why am I not motivated? I'm not materially motivated. I'm not into the same things I was into. Now, a lot of people who find me and will have a consultation with me, they're enormously spiritual. And um, they're on the spiritual path. So Keta Mahadasha is wonderful if you're on a spiritual path. In fact, it's a terrific time. And a lot of you who will consult me, you are very much on a spiritual path and you become more so on your spiritual path during a Keta period. A lot of you are doing a long-term project like a PhD or you are learning something or you're honing your skills. Um, I knew one young lady, and by young I mean sort of I think in her 40s or 50s, she had a consultation and I think, I'm pretty sure I've got this right, I think she set up a business in her family home. And if I've got this right, I think she had Ketu in the fourth house of home. Now, if we take a look at Kate's chart, which we will just have a quick little look. I don't want to look too much, but um, let's just take a little look here. You'll see that she's got Ketu in the fourth house of home. Now, Sun is there as well. Okay, so we see that, we, we can look here, we can see that, okay, she's born on an eclipse. All right, so this is powerful. Uh, this is really, really powerful. She's born on an eclipse. She's about to enter Ketu Mahadasha. Ketu is in the fourth house of home. This could mean a couple of things. Now, let's say I'm looking at this chart and I don't know that it's the famous Catherine, Princess of Wales. I, let's say I don't know it's her and I'm just reading the chart. That's it. One of the things I would be saying, talking about is the possibility that you're going to have some kind of major shift when it comes to your home, where you live. There's going to be a major shift in that regard. Um, you could move. You could live somewhere different for seven years. You could, and this is the kind of thing where you could, like my client, went back home for seven years and was starting a business there. You could go back to the parent's house, for example, or maybe there's a need for you at home, or maybe there's a sick parent that you have to go and care for. These are all the possibilities here of a Ketu in the fourth house that I would be talking about with any client. Okay, now this is quite interesting because this is a future Queen of England. And it could be some of these possibilities that I'd be talking about might seem unfathomable for her, you know, or totally out of the question. Um, it's interesting. I mean, and, and when you look at her timeline of what's coming up, she does have Venus in Capricorn here. She's going to have a Venus Mahadasha after this Ketu Mahadasha. So 20 years of this superb Venus, right? And that's a working Venus. That is, and that's in the fifth house too. That is a royal queen type position. Okay, and that's going to start for her 2031 and go for 20 years. So it's the kind of thing where if, let's say, for example, you know, the royal family were to appoint a Vedic astrologer and say, okay, well, what would be the guidance? Um, you'd want to be saying from 2024 to 2031, her health is of the utmost importance. She shouldn't be stressed out or pressured because she has the fact is she's got a glorious venus mahadasha 2031 to 2051 she has got a very very good time on the horizon where she can be um absolutely loving life her, her venus is is very good uh, especially in d9 there it's it's venus in um taurus in the first house it's beautiful right and venus here in capricorn that that can be a very queen like thing Pretty sure Taylor Swift has got her uh, Venus in Capricorn. She's quite a queen of the world right now. So we can see a glorious time ahead for her, but from 2024 to 2031, her health could be just not robust, okay? Like it is for me, my health is not robust. I've got Keith in the first house. I know this from personal experience. The other thing is, she might be a bit invisible here and there, you know, you might not see that much of her and that would be fine. And if she needs to live at home from 2024 to 2031, so for example, live at home with mum, that'd be fine. That should be, hopefully they can accommodate that, you know, hopefully that can be done. But yeah, I mean, 
that's what I'm seeing here. Uh, I'll just have a look at my notes and see if there's anything else I wanted to add to that. Yeah, I've got here, what's the advice or guidance I've got here? If she can be more part-time across Ketu Mahadasha, this will be better for her because she's going to be very busy across her Venus Mahadasha, 2031 to 2051. The other point that I have got written here is that um, a lot of healing can come through her across the next seven years. And I've got here, she may not be materially motivated at this time. Yeah, but this point about the healing that could come through her across the next seven years, and let's face it, this royal family could do with healing. You know, it needs healing energy. Um, and it really can come through her because Keitu is also enlightenment, moksha. Um, you know, it, it can be uh, quite a profound and beautiful shadow planet as it's often called, it's often called a shadow planet, you know, and yeah, we're, we're not seeing her, she's kind of in the shadows. The other thing is her Ketu is in the fourth house, yes, the sun is there, that is brightening her up, and look, I mean, that could carry her through, keep her going in the role that she's in, and in the house that she's in, and, and, and whatever it is, but yeah, I just thought I wanted to bring it up because it is such a good case study and I'm just wishing her good health and all the best because she's been uh, such an amazing person on the world stage and she deserves you know good things so anyway guys I'm going to get into the mini reports for those of you who want to stick with me I'm just sort of having a look at the time I think it's okay let's keep going I was also just having a look at my hair to see is it a bit messy I've tried to comb my hair this time in the last video <laughs> I don't know if anyone's going to watch the last one I think someone will I haven't launched it yet I haven't fully edited it yet but my hair is just so bad in that video anyway I just because like it was Sunday afternoon and I just felt like I want to make a video and I thought let's just go and make the video I didn't even look at my hair okay Anyway, guys, let's get into it. All right. Aries. Aries, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So we are going to take a look. This is Aries, Ascendant, Aries Moon or Aries Sun, as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. So where is the Mars and Saturn conjunction going to happen for you? I believe this is the biggest event. It's going to color the whole month, and it really will be intense around the 10th of April. So this is going to happen for you in your 11th house. So tension in the workplace is possible. There could be extra pressure on you to perform this month. There could be tension in your friends circles or your professional network circles as well. Could also be tension with siblings, in particular older siblings. Now both Mars and Saturn are actually individually placed really well for you. Okay, yes, they're coming together, and when they come together, it's not the best, but Mars in the 11th is great, and Saturn in the 11th is great. So I've got here, if you stick to your own lane, work on your own projects, you can really get ahead this month. Okay, and remember, you've got Saturn there in the 11th, that's beautiful energy, through to March 2025. So you keep building, doing, growing, structuring your world. Keep going. Now we've got here... 8th April, total solar eclipse, 12th house, Revati Nakshatra. Okay, so this is really big. And I've got here, expect a major graduation. So a very positive ending. Okay, so this is good. This is a good ending and a good new beginning here because we do have Venus exalted here. Okay, um, and this is a, a major graduation in your spiritual self. It's like you're graduating from something. It's like you've, you've grown. It's like... Uh, you've come to this new place within yourself. Perhaps there's a major cycle that's going to close out. Okay, but this is going to be something where you feel good. Okay, I don't see this as being a, a, a deep, dark thing. This, this should be nice. Now I've got here, what's your dream state? And keep a journal for ideas at this time. You might get really good ideas at this time. So definitely keep a little journal or something or um, make sure you note down your ideas, especially if you're an artist, any of that. Yeah, I've got here, great for artists. There could be a lot of new ideas at this time. So that's on the 8th of April. And then on the 24th of April, we've got the full moon happening in Libra, Swati Nakshatra, happening in your seventh house. So 
so I think nakshatra, I always think it's very much about freedom, you know, and it's about being yourself, your full self. And I've got here that this full moon on the 24th of April is a great time for you to reflect on freedom and how free you really are as a being. Recognize and value the many ways that you are free, especially when it comes to you as a being and you in the relationships that you're in. And what are the relationships where you feel free, where you feel free to be your full self? Those are really special relationships that you can value at this time. Aries, it's looking like a good month ahead. I'm wishing you well. We're going to welcome Taurus. Taurus, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So this is Taurus Ascendant, Taurus Moon or Taurus Sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. So we've got Mars and Saturn, that big powerful conjunction in the sky that's going to impact everyone this month. That's happening for you in your 10th house. And you're really going to feel the impact of that around the 10th of April. So where is this impacting you? Well, you might be feeling extra pressure or burden at work in your career. Maybe you feel like you need to be doing more. Maybe you've got that feeling running in the background. Now, Saturn lords your ninth house. So there could be tension with your father as well. Uh, or if you are a father as well could be could be some tension there too you as a father that's a possibility as well now mars lords your seventh house and so there could be tension in relationship with your partner that's definitely a possibility here so there could just be tension or pressure that you feel across this month and it, it really should ease sort of 23rd April onwards when Mars leaves that house. This is a time to structure and strategize next steps. And don't you worry, because you're going to have a great run with work from 23 April onwards. Yeah, that's when uh, Mars is going to enter your 11th house. So that could be a profitable time, 23rd April onwards. Now, 8th April, we have a total solar eclipse happening in your 11th house in Revati Nakshatra. So how you bring opportunities into your life, how that mechanism works, that whole thing could be being renewed, refreshed. There's an eclipse point, it's gonna hammer that area of your life. And when the dust settles, there should be some renewal in that area. It is a total solar eclipse and total solar eclipse, eclipse can sometimes jump us forward. So if you feel as well that you have been behind, uh, the universe could jump you forward, okay? So don't worry if, if you're feeling behind. I've seen this happen so many times where, you know, somebody, um, all their friends have bought property and they haven't and stuff like that. I, I read for a, a young lady one time who was in that exact situation. And I could see, I think her Saturn was exalted or something in the second house. And I could see a few things and I said to her, oh my gosh, when you get on the property ladder, you're going to do better than everybody. And she got in touch with me and she said, yeah, do you know what? I, I bought my apartment and it's actually worth a lot more than everyone else's and it's in a better part of town. And she said, you were right. And I was like, wow, yeah, <laughs> I'm not right. The system is right, you know, uh, but yeah. So yeah, I mean, you could be jumped forward with this event. Taurus. I've got here, you might get ideas on what projects to initiate for your future. This could be time to create that online course or start a new social media platform. I've got here, the universe wants you to earn more and wants you to expand now. So go with that flow, okay, and leave behind any of the doubts or that I can't do it or that I'm not good enough. And know that if you're going to launch something, don't do it here on the total solar eclipse. Do it on, I think it was the 9th of May. Yeah, 9th of May, that's Akshaya Trithya. Sun is exalted in the sky, moon is exalted in the sky. So that'll be time to launch something new. And now there's a 20, uh, there's a, I was going to say 20 full moons. No, there's a new, there's a full moon happening on the 24th of April in Libra Swathi Nakshatra in your sixth house. So it's a full moon all about freedom. And this is happening in your sixth house. I've got here, see if you can feel into all the ways 
that you are actually free at work. Now at work, sometimes we feel quite restricted. We're like, well, I, I want to do this project, but I can't, or I want to work with those people, but I can't. There are all these restrictions and blockages. But see the ways where you are free and you'll find that you're very free. You're free to be excellent at what you do. Now I know sometimes that can be difficult because we're in the sixth house here and sometimes you don't want to draw attention to yourself or be too good or you know because people get jealous all that kind of thing. That's true. But I've got here, look for the ways that you are free at work. And it could be that you're free to just be excellent. You're free to be good to your client or you're free to be, you know, um, you're free to set up a side hustle. You're free to make changes maybe in some way. I've got here, yeah, are you free to put more care into your service or what you do? Can you do what you do with more positivity? And I've got here, you are more free than you realize. And this is true. I know um, recently I had to call a couple of call centers, get some admin stuff done. And I always end up having a nice chat with the people who are there. Because I, I don't know, because I'm, I'm always friendly and nice to those people. And and, the, and they're super friendly and nice to me. And, and it's like, but it's, so, it's such a joy when you connect with someone who um, they feel free to be to be happy and be themselves. I love all that. All right. Anyway, uh, Taurus, thank you so much for joining. Sorry, I always get carried away. I'm looking at the time. Yeah, because I've got to get, do like 12 of these. So thank you so much for joining, Taurus. I'm wishing you well. I'm wishing you, I'm wishing you a good eclipse as well. Um, 11th house there. You know, you might have some wishes, gifts might come in for you. All right. Thank you so much for joining. We are now going to welcome Gemini. Gemini, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. This is Gemini Ascendant, Gemini Moon or Gemini Sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. So we've got this big Mars and Saturn conjunction happening in the sky in April. It's the big event. Now it's going to feel really intense around the 10th of April and it's going to be happening for you in your ninth house. So you might be feeling overly responsible or burdened at this time. That's a possibility. As the leader in your family or at work, you might be feeling the pressure to perform. Now, an old family issue could come to the surface for you to alchemize because Saturn lords your eighth house. Equally, there could be arguments at work because Mars lords your sixth. So go slowly this month. Just navigate carefully, you know. Uh, no sudden moves, any of that. I've got here, you have very good work transits coming for you from 23rd April onwards. Okay, things are going to get better. Just there's a little bit of a, it, it, and it might not be. If you're working in a very Saturnian way and, um, you know, everything is lean and humble in your world, then you may not encounter any of this because it's all lean and humble anyway, you know, so uh, that, that should be okay. But yeah, depending on what else you've got going on, you know, it could be different for you. 8th April, total solar eclipse. That's happening for you in your 10th house, Revati Nakshatra. So your career could be getting some kind of total renewal, total upgrade, total revamp of energy here, you know. Um, I, have, I have here the future is being built at this time. Don't worry if you can't see what's ahead right now. And if you're looking for work, just don't expect too much at this time because things are potentially being course corrected for you here. And always know that the divine is, is it's, always know that everything is working out for my highest good. That's a classic Louise Hay line. And I'm trying to think Kyle Cease, I'll put his name on the screen. He had a line and if I can't remember the line, I'll write it on the screen, but it was something about like the universe is smart and it's going to arrange things better than you can imagine. Okay, so you just hang in there. If there's any course correction, if there's any changes that are going on at work or in relation to work, know that something better know that something better is being brought in for you. Okay. And on the 24th of April, we have a full moon in Libra Swati Nakshatra happening in your fifth house. So you might feel a strong sense of creative freedom at this time. Look for all the ways that you are free to be creative, to reinvent yourself, to express yourself, to build something new. Uh, and what you want to do is just enjoy your creativity, enjoy the expressing. Don't worry if 
like you're doing social media and the numbers are low or any of that. Don't worry about who's looking or who's not looking. Don't worry about that. You just keep expressing. You keep singing your song. People will come. And if not now, it's, it's all being arranged. Take your time. There's no rush. I've got here, this is just a time to recognize how much creator power you have. And you have probably more than you realize. Gemini, it's looking like a good month ahead. I'm wishing you well. We are now going to welcome Cancer. Cancer, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So this is Cancer Ascendant, Cancer Moon or Cancer Sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. So Mars and Saturn are conjunct in your eighth house. And you'll really feel this strongly around the 10th of April, but it's really coloring the whole month, at least up until about the 23rd. Now, you might be in a situation where you feel that there is little that you can do to shift things any which way. It's possible right now that you might be approaching a stuck place or some stuck type energy or something like that. I've got here, stop, be still, and hand it all over to greater intelligence. Okay, the universe, God, fortune, you know, luck. People who believe in luck, they're lucky. You know, life really can be that simple. So this is that time to let go. Uh, I've got here, you are part of that greater intelligence and solutions will come in, okay? You're the drop in the ocean, you're connected to the whole ocean, you really are, you're connected to God. So just keep remembering that connection and that's what clears the pathway and the insights and ideas Will come in thicker and stronger. I've just I've got here the note you just have to hang in there. Now this could be to do with your family, could be to do with children, could be to do with work, it could be to do with a few areas of life for you because I was having a look at the lordships. Um, you could be dealing with something hidden, you could be doing some shadow work at this time uh, just in the background there you know like and sometimes when shadow work is happening not a lot else is happening in life, you know, and you're kind of frustrated and you're thinking, why isn't anything working? I've had that recently. I've had that over the last few weeks. I was sick. And it was like, it's almost like I got knocked out or something because like, I don't know, God wanted to clear the path and do something. And they're like, oh, she's in the way. Ugh, let's knock her out. <laughs> I don't know. I try and come up with these theories. I really don't know. Sometimes I know. But this last sickness, I don't know why, but I'll find out later. Um, but yeah, there could be some shadow work happening in the background there for you. I don't know. But here, you'll, you'll start to feel a bit of relief from the end of this month onwards. So if things have been tough, just know you've got good transits coming up. You've got some really nice things coming up later in the year. So you just keep hanging on in there, Cancer, if it's been a bit tough lately. Now, the 8th of April, we've got a total solar eclipse. Ninth house, Revati Nakshatra. So this total solar eclipse is quite a powerful one for you because how much authority over your own life that you feel you have, that authority is getting a total renewal. Okay. Uh, and after this eclipse, what you might find is that some big cycles have closed out for you and you'll start to feel that you have more control over your own life. Look out for that. Okay, see if you can notice and observe that, that wow, I'm actually more empowered than I realize. I've actually got more ability to, you know, maneuver and mold my life. I've got here, you are the authority. So see if you can feel that after this eclipse. And remember when I say after the eclipse, it's kind of like two weeks after. It, it can take time. Uh, and sometimes, gosh, I remember having like the most massive eclipse where all my natal planets are kind of thing and it was I thought it, my whole life's going to change and I, there was nothing that happened and I'm looking I'm like oh I still live in the same place and it's boring and this and that it's not boring but like <laughs> I was looking at my life going oh, it's all the same and um but when I look back several years later I was like oh my gosh my whole life changed at that exact time I just, I was just too in it and I couldn't see it. So sometimes we need a lot of distance to see. Uh, what else you got going on here? So you are the authority, 24th April, 
full moon, Libra, Swati Nakshatra, happening in your fourth house. So this is a really lovely full moon for you. This is just a time to recharge at home. Just be at home, just cook up something delicious. Go here, relax and reflect on areas in your life where you are free to be you. And you can reflect on, can you be yourself at home? And maybe there are some people you're more at home with than others and just reflect on it. Just have a look. Gentle contemplation and in that gentle contemplation something might release. Cancer, even though I know there are some slightly tough aspects here, overall you're going to be just fine. Keep hanging in there, you've got good transits coming as well. All right, thank you so much for joining. We are now going to welcome Leo. Leo, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. This is Leo Ascendant, Leo Noon, or Leo Sun, as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. So now we've got a Mars and Saturn conjunction happening in your seventh house, which will be really intense across the 10th of April. So in your personal relationships, you might come across... <clears throat> Some stuck places. That's really interesting. I had to clear my throat just at that moment. So there's some relationship thing where, yeah, you might. Um, I've got here. You might even find yourself at a crossroads, especially in your committed relationship, or in your marriage, your partnership, any of that. Uh, it's it's possible that things could just be maybe not moving. That's all. It could just be that. Or it could be a bit of a stuck place. I've got here this month you are prone to arguments and with Mercury in retrograde you don't want to say, say something you might later regret. Okay, so it's good to have a heads up on that so that you can just, you know, it's, it's all right sometimes to stick our head in the sand. Sometimes we need to. And just sort of wait for the timing to change and then you can communicate and be real and state your piece and, you know... Go ahead, take time out, run your own race for a little while. Things will calm down end of month onwards. So you don't have long to wait. It's kind of 23rd April onwards. <clears throat> things, will, uh, things will lift and shift. Now I've got 8th of April, total solar eclipse. This is happening 8th house, Ravathi Nakshatra. I've got here, your spiritual side is getting a total renewal. Perhaps your occult gifts are getting a total renewal, an upgrade as well. Yeah, I've got here as well, occult gifts could crack open from this eclipse onwards. I've got here, watch your dream state, note down any new ideas. This could also be healing for you. And it's possible that something holding you back could close out for good at this time. So that's certainly something to look forward to. Now we've got 24th April, full moon, Libra, Swati Nakshatra, happening in your third house. So this is a time to reflect on how far you have come in terms of your courage and confidence. And also to reflect on maybe you've developed a certain calmness, uh, you know, especially if you're on your spiritual path, you're growing, you, you might have found that, wow, that I've got an unshakable calmness here, you know, like um, it's good on a full moon to reflect on where we're doing it right. And then in the area of your life where you're not doing it right, see if you can borrow the learning where you are doing it right. So, you know, so for example, maybe in your work, you're very calm, but maybe with your, and we've got here third house, maybe with your sibling, sibling drives you crazy, right? Maybe something like that. So, but you're good at it at work. You're good at it with work peers or you're good at being calm there. So. <clears throat> where you are doing it right, see if you can borrow what you're doing right from there and implement it where it's not working so well. That could be something to do there on the, on the 24th of April. Leo, I'm wishing you well. Take care. We are now going to welcome Virgo. Virgo, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So this is Virgo Ascendant, Virgo Moon, or Virgo Sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. So now we've got this big Mars and Saturn conjunction. This is happening. It's going to be really intense around the 10th of April. It's going to last sort of up until the 23rd there. Uh, and this conjunction is happening in your sixth house. So you might be feeling the pressure of competition at work. You might be feeling 
like all eyes are on you or I better not shine too much because I don't want people to be jealous or something like that. There's all kinds of things happening here in the sixth house. Some of that is possible. Uh, it could be in connection with your clients. Maybe you have a ton of clients coming in or um, which could be because Mars and Saturn are both there. Um, you could be really busy or you have a lot of pressure from your clients or there's a lot of demands on you. Equally, if you're in a court case, the court case could be quite intense. There could be a standstill here as well. Sometimes with a Mars-Saturn conjunction, it can be you know, a bit of a jarring sort of a thing. I've got here equally, there could be pressure coming from the needs of one of your children, um, as Saturn lords your fifth house. There could be an unresolved healing issue that comes up at this time as Mars lords your eighth. I've got here stay strong, stay steady, and you being calm is actually going to be an asset for everyone around you. It's like your calmness could really serve other people at this time. So that's your service element there in the six. So there could be something about you being consciously still and just knowing, okay, I know this is going to blow over, so I'll be the calm, sane one here. You doing that could be great for everybody, okay, in ways that you don't even know. Now on the 8th of April, we have a total solar eclipse happening in your 7th house. Uh, and this is Revati Nakshatra here. So that's the 7th house. Your heart space and sense of self is getting a total renewal at this time. The universe wants you to enjoy closer relationships with the people in your life or new people who are more suitable that the universe might be lining up to bring them in. So just allow the changes. Could be a bit uncomfortable here in some relationships, but um, see how you go. 24th April, full moon, Libra, Swati Nakshatra. This is happening in your second house. This is a beautiful full moon to enjoy cooking something delicious. Uh, it's a good time to relax. And be grateful for all that you've accomplished in life so far. This is just a good full moon to just reflect on, hey, do you know what? I'm, I've actually done good. That's important to do now and then, because otherwise, if we're too hard on ourselves, feeling the lack only all the time, like that's not good. You've got to celebrate now and then. You've got to feel good and treat yourself. So this is that kind of full moon. I've got here, be grateful for all that you've accomplished so far and be grateful for all the small things in your life that you love. That's another important thing to do now and then. Virgo, I'm wishing you well. We are now gonna welcome Libra. Libra, welcome, thank you so much for joining. So this is Libra Ascendant, Libra Moon, or Libra Sun, as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. So we've got Mars and Saturn conjunct in your fifth house. That's gonna intensify, and you're gonna really feel that around the 10th of April. So with Mars lording your seventh house, you could be feeling the pressure in your romantic life. We're here in the fifth house. This is a house of romance. So it could be your romantic life if you're dating, if you're in a committed relationship with Mars lording the seventh. You, know, you could be feeling some pressure there. I've got here, if you are single, you might be feeling the pressure of wanting to be in a relationship. Okay, so... It could be a thing of, um, because Mars can often be our drive in life and our desires. And Saturn, of course, can materialize things. <clears throat> so your tremendous desire for something could be being, yeah, you might be feeling that quite strongly at this time. I've got here, if you aren't interested in finding a partner, you might be feeling the pressure of some lack in your life. Okay, so. If there's some kind of lack in your life, you might be feeling the pressure of that. And I've got here, don't be deterred by any pressure. Be you and keep running your own race. This is a time to be grounded, to be real, to be you, to keep running your own race. Um, and be conscious, be consciously aware of these pressures. And because sometimes when we're just aware of these things, they can release and vanish. So also you, you do want to be aware of any tremendous desire or feeling of lack or feeling of, oh, if only I had this, then my life would be better. Become aware of that. And through that awareness, 
some of all of that might calm down and you might start to see, hey, I'm actually quite abundant or I'm actually, things are okay or, you know, and from that okayness, you can build the next thing. Now on 8th of April, we've got a total solar eclipse happening in your sixth house, Revati Nakshatra. So how you serve others or your work or your career or the competition or something about the playing field of life could be totally renewed at this time. Maybe the marketplace in which you compete, maybe something gets eclipsed and changed there. That's a possibility. I've got here, allow any changes at work or to do with how you compete in the marketplace. Allow these changes to happen. Um, and things will become more smooth a couple of weeks after this date. Okay, it's not the best time to, you know, launch a new project or something like that. If you do want to launch something new, I'm pretty sure it's the 9th of May, Libra. Let's just take a look here. Uh, 9th of May. Yes, it is indeed. I want to write that down, 9th of May, just so I don't forget. I have to remember that too, because I want to launch something there as well. <laughs> I'll let you know. <laughs> um, 2024, 9th May, yep. So yeah, you definitely want to launch something new on the 9th of May. Uh, and 24th of April, full moon, Libra Swati Nakshatra. This is happening in your first house. Libra, this is your full moon. Oh, this is wonderful. So I've got here time to enjoy how free you are. You know, um, look at all the ways where in life you actually are free. I've got here, celebrate all the places in life where you are free to be your full self. Where is that? Where do you feel that? Where do you feel really happy? Could be in a hobby. Could be in something that you love doing. Could be, I don't know, cooking or a hobby or um, these days I've been really, well, not lately, because I'm at, down here in Sydney, Australia. But when I go back to England, I'm going to get my sewing machine out. I'm going to be sewing. I love sewing. It's so much fun. That's my hobby right now that makes me really happy. So yeah, what is that thing where you love to do that and you feel good? And So yeah, celebrate all the places in life where you are free to be your full self. 24th April. Libra, I'm wishing you well. Take care. We are now going to welcome Scorpio. Scorpio, I just turned my phone over because it's distracting me. I'm going to put it over there. Mars and Saturn. Oh, Mars and Saturn. Gosh, they're in the sky. They're going to be conjunct. And it's going to be really intense across the 10th of April, potentially. See how it goes for you. And for you, it's going to happen in your fourth house. So I've got here, you might personally be feeling pressure regarding your home life or something to do with the home or it could be to do with your work life balance okay there's just some pressure here there's just something that doesn't feel right i've got here it could be that something needs repair at home that's a possibility or something needs attending to it could also be to do with your relationship with your mother something there could be um, requiring your attention I've got here, know that everything becomes easier. Know that everything becomes easier at the end of the month onwards, okay. Uh, now, 8th of April, we have a total solar eclipse happening in your fifth house in Revati Nakshatra. So your romantic life could be being totally renewed at this time. Your heart could be totally renewed at this time. Or your relationship with your children, or this could be to do with your creativity, something to do with your creativity. I've got here, it's a positive renewal with exciting things to look forward to in these areas on the horizon in the future. Okay, we do have an exalted Venus as part of this eclipse. And there's something future making about a total solar eclipse. We've got all the planets on the Rahu side. So we're building the future here. So I think you've got some beautiful new things coming in for you Scorpio I'm so excited for you that sounds really good fifth house lovely that's good Scorpio now 24th of April we have a full moon in Libra Swati Nakshatra happening in your 12th house so this is a really lovely full moon where you can contemplate how free you are as a spiritual being 
Okay, and that is for sure no matter what. We're in the 12th house here. So this is, this is where, you know, it's that all is one. It's that um, high spirituality there. I've got here, you know, no matter what is happening here on earth, spiritually, we are always free. And I always think of um, Nelson Mandela when I think about this because he... I think he had a lot of eighth house type of stuff. I'm trying to remember his chart. I kind of remember it. And I'm pretty sure he had a lot of eighth house type stuff. And I think, I mean, well, we know. Boy, was he stuck. You know, he was in prison. He had some 12th house stuff too because 12th house is prison as well. But the reason I'm bringing him up is because in that extremely confined life situation, he found his spiritual side and found and anchored himself in that part of him that is eternally free you know and it's like this full moon has that feeling for you where you can uh, re-identify that you know when you say I am this I do this and when a lot of people think I they think of the physical body but it's actually not it's actually I is something far bigger it's your eternal self it's your infinite beingness you know it's that and it's like there's something about on the 24th of april you might be re-identifying that i-ness of you when you say i you know that it's that part of me that's eternally free no matter what's going on in the world um or what illness I have, or where I'm stuck, or I'm stuck in this place and I can't go anywhere. And but that's not you, you know. You, 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 you. There's yeah. There could be some recalibration here on the 24th of April, that full moon. Wow, amazing, Scorpio. Some very deep stuff going on here. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in. I didn't know I was going to say all of that. All right, we are now going to welcome Sagittarius. Sagittarius, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So this is Sagittarius Ascendant, Sagittarius Moon or Sagittarius Sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. So we've got this big Mars and Saturn conjunction happening in the sky. It's going to be really intense across the 10th of April. This is happening for you in your third house. So there could be something in your life where you aren't feeling that confident, possibly. Um, this feeling might manifest at this time or it might be creeping up or intensifying, you know, across end of March into April here. I've got here, recognize that this is just an illusion and it's just for a time. Equally, there could be pressure on you from your family of origin. There could be something you have to deal with back home. That's to do with your childhood home, possibly. There could also be pressure on you from work as well or peers at work or something along those lines. I've got here, do what you have to do. Things will normalize at the end of the month onwards. Now we've got a total solar eclipse that's on the 8th of April. It's happening in your fourth house in Revati Nakshatra. So something in your home might be totally renewed. There could also be a cycle that closes out to do with your home or like maybe a contract that needs renewing or something connected with home. Uh, there could also be a change or a shift in where you have that at home feeling as well. That's another possibility. There could also be a renewal or a cycle close in your relationship with your mother as well. And we've got the 24th of April. And by the way, if you're moving or looking for where do you want to live or something like that, you might want to take some time and just let this eclipse happen. And then, you know, a week or two passes and then you get on with that. If you're able to not move at this time, <clears throat> that would be advisable or delay moving. Uh, that, that would definitely be advisable. Now there's a full moon happening on the 24th of April 
in Libra, Swati Nakshatra in your 11th house. So this is a beautiful full moon to spend with friends or being social, maybe with siblings or people that you consider your soul tribe. It's a good time to recognize all the many freedoms that you have in your life. Okay, and I know that, you know, especially with the Mars and Saturn conjunction, that could be really highlighting some stuck places. That could really be highlighting some limitations or, you know, I want to get ahead, but I can't, you know, um, there's that feeling going on there. And that could be impacting your confidence, as I said earlier. But we've got this beautiful full moon where it really is advisable to contemplate how you are actually very free. Uh, all the many ways in which you are very free. Sagittarius, I want to thank you so much for joining. We are now going to welcome Capricorn. Capricorn, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So this is Capricorn Ascendant, Capricorn Moon or Capricorn Sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. So now we've got Mars and Saturn conjunct in your second house. And this is really going to intensify around the 10th of April. So you might be feeling a lot of pressure or tension at home. Okay, Mars Lords, your fourth house. Um, this could also be just to do with yourself. So not to do with anybody else. Could also be to do with all the work that you have to get done and all the work you want to get done. Because Saturn Lords, your first. So this could be some self-pressure here. And I've got here, see if you can relax while working. Now, this is actually an advanced spiritual level or concept where the masters, they try to um, do their work so consciously that they're also using their consciousness to relax themselves at the same time while they are working. Okay, and that is a pretty incredible concept or thing. And I remembered looking at that when I was in England, actually. I, I remembered looking at this concept there um, towards the end of, I think it was last year, I remember playing with this concept. And I was playing with this concept in terms of when I washed dishes. And anyway, I was washing these dishes and I was doing something in the kitchen and I kind of realized, I could kind of consciously see, oh my gosh, I'm, I, my shoulders are really tense. Why? I'm just washing dishes. And then I immediately sort of relaxed myself and brought myself back into the now. So obviously I was doing the dishes and went on autopilot and then went into my head and started stressing about something. So this concept is really that, that you do your work, but you're kind of grounding yourself, you're becoming more present in the now, you're becoming more conscious of the now, you're looking for, hey, am I tense? Am I stressing out? And then you realize, oh, and you're like, why? Why am I, I'm not doing anything stressful, you know, is that. It's, it's that kind of thing that you could, you could try playing with that across this month and see if that helps you. Um, we've got here 8th April, total solar eclipse happening third house, Ravati Nakshatra. So your confidence and your sense of yourself can get a total renewal at this time. Okay, and I've got here, expect good things on the horizon in the form of new friendships, new experiences, new social type stuff, new sort of lighthearted type times. That is going to come in for you. And this eclipse is just kind of shaking up that side of your life. Um, but we've got an exalted Venus there and I do think that there's some future building happening as part of this eclipse and I think you've got some lovely things that you're going to materialize and, and come into uh, later on definitely you know as this year progresses but definitely say for example March 2025 onwards when you come out of your Saturday Saturday period okay so you're you're just on the home stretch Capricorn you're doing amazing Keep going. You're doing really well. Keep hanging in there. Keep keep doing what you're doing. It's it's all good. The rewards are going to come in. Okay, and if you're not feeling them this year, you are definitely going to be feeling them next year. Now, 24th April, full moon, Libra Swati Nakshatra. It's happening in your 10th house. So you might find that some big project at work completes at this time. That's a possibility. It's also a good time to contemplate what you do 
for work or what you'd like to do and how you are actually free to do great work in this world. Contemplate and think about and be in the vibration of, yeah, what, you know, what, what am I doing day to day and how, how am I free to do that even better? And recognize that, okay, maybe you're in a tough job or maybe you're in a tough spot, but you're actually free to move, you know? And um, sometimes people, they say, oh, well, I only have just been in this job for a few months. It looks really bad on the CV if I move. I, I don't agree with that at all. I think the people who move, they, they recognize, oh, this isn't me, and then they go quickly. I remember I worked, when I was working in advertising, there was a guy who after two months, he was just like, oh, this place is terrible. I don't want to be here. And he left. And I, I knew, I could see in him that that guy, he's going places. I knew that he is, and he probably is, he's probably achieving lots of things right now. I mean, I don't know. I, I, yeah, I, I just remembered he was a great worker and he just sort of assessed, well, this place is boring and he left. And I thought, good on him. I think it's good when people do that. I don't know, I haven't seen that be a problem. But maybe different countries, different industries, I don't know. I have a friend who, anyway, she tells me that, well, in Australia, you can't do that. I don't know. Certainly in England, I think people are, uh, there's a lot of freedom, actually, a bigger economy. So that's also why I think, yeah. Anyway, Capricorn, you're at the end of your Sarisati. Keep hanging in there. Keep going. You are being polished into a diamond. Okay, this is all illusion. We've got to remember all these small little wisdom principles and that really keeps us going. Take care. I'm wishing you well. We are now going to welcome Aquarius. Aquarius, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. This is Aquarius Ascendant, Aquarius Moon or Aquarius Sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. So now we've got Mars and Saturn conjunct in your first house. Okay, this is intense. You're really going to feel this across the 10th of April. So I've got here, you might be feeling a mild sort of tension or pressure throughout your life. Maybe it's mild, maybe it's quite intense. I don't know. It depends on what's going on for you. If you're an Aquarius moon, it could be very intense. Okay. And I'm just wishing you strength. Uh, keep going. Okay. Keep going. It's tough, but you are going to get to a place where things will change. They really, really will. You've just got to believe. You've just got to keep hanging in there. There are so many transits and times where, do you know, I mean, I've been here for longer this time. I should have actually, uh, I should be in England right now. And when I had to change my flight, I was a bit disappointed. I was like, oh, I don't, I don't want to stay. I want to get on with my life. You know, I'm still here. Anyway. But like, you've just got to let go. You've just got to let go and go, okay, I have to go with this flow. So if you're in some kind of stuck situation where, yeah, you're having to let go uh, and just go with it, let go, go with it. Don't worry. Don't, um, I've got some wisdom here for you. I've got here, perhaps you're feeling the pressure to perform or achieve. And I've got here, Lester Levinson says, there is nothing for you to do. There is nothing for you to achieve. So see if you can feel into that and just relax, go, you know, all those to-do lists in our minds and all that pressure we put on ourselves, just, just let it all go. Just let it all go. And I've got here, you can meditate on this concept that there's nothing to do, there's nothing to achieve. And I've also got here this concept of operate from a place of I've made it now. And... I'll tell you something, I was watching an interview with Jacob Collier and they asked him and they said something about what was the moment where you thought you made it? And I loved his response. He said, do you know what? He said, I thought I made it when I, when I uploaded my first web page. I thought I made it when I wrote my first song. I thought I made it when I created my YouTube channel and I didn't put anything on it. I love that answer because that is exactly how you should live life. You should feel like I've made it now. And anything extra, it's a bonus. You know, so 
Yeah, make that YouTube channel. Who cares if you don't put any videos for two months, five months, a year? Don't worry about it. You made the channel, right? Or whatever it is, like whatever it is that you're doing, feel like you've made it. And then somehow that can be very motivating. That can motivate you to do even more, to keep building. Because you feel good at each step. So then you're like, oh yeah, I want to do another step because that felt good. Because I felt like I made it, you know? It, it could be that. Maybe that's where you're going to get the momentum from. Wow, I've just learned something from that too. Okay, that was good advice for me. All right, well, anyway, uh, 8th April, total solar eclipse. That's happening in your second house, Rayavati Nakshatra. So I've got here your abundance, the area that governs your big wealth, is getting a total renewal at this time. So don't worry if your finances look pretty bad right now. Okay, you might be in a situation where you're like, my finances do not look good. Uh, I've got here, you are due more wealth to start coming in after this eclipse. There is more wealth, there is abundance and all of that due for you. Something's being cleared out, something's being changed in that area of your life. And I do think that that big abundance should start coming in after this eclipse. You've got an exalted Venus there in your second house as part of this eclipse. The eclipse is future building. It's a solar eclipse. It's all the planets are on the Rahu side. So the future is being built here. And uh, yeah, I think there's some good big wealth that's due to come into you. So don't worry if finances haven't been great lately. Now on the 24th of April, we have a full moon Libra Swathi Nakshatra happening in your ninth house. So this is a really good time for you to contemplate how much control and authority you really do have over your own life. And the ninth house, you know, when we've got the sun in the ninth house, which we don't have the sun in the ninth house here, we've got the moon in the ninth house here, but I'll just tell you quickly, when the sun is there in the ninth house, that really is God energy. That is that God power. And ninth is very much about like how how we feel about our God power. Do we feel like we're in charge of our own life? Do we feel like we are the creator of our own life? This is that kind of place. And with the moon here, full moon being here, and the sun is opposite, you've got the ability to reflect on uh, and contemplate deeply. You know, do I feel in charge of my own life? Do I feel that God creator power that all the abundance people talk about? You, know, you watch those manifestation videos and what's his name well there's Stuart Wilde and there's was it Neil Goddard and all those kind of people and they all talk about you know you create your own life and all that kind of thing that God power which you have but it's like you might be able to feel that on the 24th or you might be able to contemplate that and get some insights and downloads of your own on the 24th it's a good time it's a good day to journal about that on the 24th I've got here, you are more in charge than you might currently realize. Aquarius, thank you so much for joining. Any Aquarius moon people, you hang in there, okay? Just keep going. You're mid, mid Sadi Sati, not too long to go now. Keep hanging in there. And we are now going to welcome Pisces. Pisces, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. I was just checking the time. We're all good. All right, now we've got Mars and Saturn conjunct in your 12th house so that is going to really intensify and be felt quite acutely there on the 10th of april it's going to start to ease off and then 23rd of april onwards thereabouts the energy will shift so you might feel some pressure at this time mars and saturn conjunction can be a bit of a pressure type thing uh it could generate some pressure so i've got here the pressure you feel at this time could potentially be self-generated. Got here, you might be being hard on yourself at this time. This is a time to go slowly, don't overwork. If you feel that there are many delays and Saturn is really putting the brakes on, this is not a time for you to speed up. And I've got here, yeah, that kind of phrase here that, you know, there's not a time to speed up and go nowhere fast. Um, you know when you're at the lights and like and, and you're driving and someone's in a real rush and they have to overtake you and this and that and then you meet them at the next red light it's like what's the rush 
it's that kind of thing here so it's like just and that's the thing that I've experimented with when Saturn puts the brakes on I put the brakes on I think all right well maybe I do need to go slowly sometimes I try to if Saturn puts the brakes on I think to myself oh I can do extra work and you know all that and then I've been burnt out by that sometimes so yeah these days I'm experimenting with okay Saturn goes slow I go slow and that does work pretty well because when you're needed by life when you're needed on the playing field of life oh you'll be there you know you can't miss your destiny right we think we can but we can't you can't and you can't miss your good karma so you know um, we can use our conscious mind to lessen the bad karma that that we can do but don't worry you won't miss the good stuff I've got here you slow down if you need to Mars lords your ninth house and so if you have spare energy it's good to invest that in learning or skilling up in things that are going to be important in your future okay so that's going to be a really good activity to do at this time I remember my 12th from transit I had a significant 12th from transit brought me back here to this very room <laughs> across 2020 to 2023 I was here and um, yeah I used to relax <laughs> sometimes I used to you know I used to watch Made in Chelsea at that time which is like a sort of cheesy TV show that no one really watches it's like drama I used to like it I used to watch that at that time um, because yeah it was a sort of 12th from thing to do you know it's, it's, you're allowed to relax and I did and then when I got back to England oh I didn't watch that show at all and I was watching it because I was missing England I was missing the streets of England so that's why I used to watch it anyway um, 8th April total solar eclipse and that's happening first house Revati Nakshatra this is powerful Pisces this is a total solar eclipse you this is huge so I've got here if possible rest at this time see if you can do little at this time I've got here your whole being is getting a renewal at this time I'm seeing this eclipse as a very positive one for you I do believe this is going to be a positive eclipse we've got Venus exalted as part of this eclipse I know we've got Mars and Saturn basically next door and that's not great but let's just look at the eclipse here it's it's good energy um, and I've got here really good new things will be generated in your future we've got that beautiful exalted Venus on the Rahu side so it's good beautiful things that are going to be generated in your future and when the dust settles from this eclipse you'll move forward and you know have a look at what areas in your life you feel a bit renewed or a bit relaxed or like a cycle has closed you might be closing a major cycle at this time and I've got here the good things that are being generated in your future you're definitely going to discover those you're not going to miss them now on the 24th of April we have a full moon in Libra Swati Nakshatra happening in your eighth house so this is a stunning full moon where again if you can ideally rest that's going to be good for you perhaps you're at home with the family and if you can reflect on how free you really are in life that would be good I've got here your occult gifts might be particularly alive to you at this time see if you get any insights any learnings any downloads any clarity you might get some clarity about what are these big cycles that have just closed out for you so this is a good month Pisces for you to really take it slow be gentle um, yeah not a time to overwork and if you're a Pisces moon person definitely uh, go easy look after your health look after your well-being nourish yourself feel good be grounded you know look after your your physical body and take care this is this is that kind of month where you don't want to you don't want to be overdoing it well Pisces and anybody who has watched the whole video I want to thank you so much for being here and yeah I didn't know I was going to film in this room I didn't want to I it's because it like there's so much mess and what I did is I just shoved it all over there <laughs> so I definitely won't film that side of the room because there's just so much stuff but this will be my last video here in Sydney I think 
I think the next video I'm going to do, I will be in England and I've recovered from my sickness. I'll be able to fly. I'm looking forward to going home to my other home. When I'm there for a whole year and I've worked like crazy, then I like to come here. So, you know, it's like that. But um, I'm looking forward to being back there. I'm looking forward to doing sessions with you guys, live Zoom sessions, interviews I'll be doing, yeah, on the channel, uh, more videos, everything. I'm going to get right back into it. And I'm really looking forward to making more videos. So I'll say bye for now. Um, but look out for me. I will be back. I, I don't know when is the next video I'll do, but it might be April. So yeah, I have been a bit um, distant and inconsistent over the last few weeks. That sickness really took it out of me, but I've recovered fully. And uh, once I get over the time zone thing, when I get back there, you'll see me on the channel. I'll be back. I can't wait to make more videos, more content for you guys. I love doing this work. I want to thank you so much for tuning in. And I look forward to seeing you next time.